Good afternoon. Welcome to the DFS Urban YouTube channel. I am Razzle11, and you can find me on X at Razzle11Grinds. Going to take a look at some pitching for today, the 12th of April. It is Friday. We do have a regular main slate. We did already lose one game from this slate. Uh, <clears throat> so it is down to an 11 game main slate here. Um, and for those of you that are new to this video, uh, this is kind of my first look at pitching options for a slate. I focus primarily on DraftKings, uh, since that is where a majority of my play is. And that is where I believe, uh, pitching is even more important. So, uh, you can kind of take my, my DraftKings pitcher pool and cut it in half. And that kind of gets you a FanDuel pitcher pool. Uh, but. Like I said, for the sake of the video, we would focus on the DraftKings pricing. Uh, <clears throat> as you see, the Cleveland-New York game rained out. It annoys me that as soon as it gets rained out, DraftKings then lists every pitcher on each team in the pitching pool. Uh, <clears throat> so to make it easier for us to read, we'll just go through and highlight every other team on the slate so that we can look at the guys that are actually pitching this evening uh, from a weather standpoint that should pretty much do it uh, there's some rain potentially in Boston and New York nothing too major there's a lot of wind out there uh, definitely something to pay attention to a couple cold weather games in Boston and Chicago uh, <clears throat> but nothing really holding me back off of pitching now that we lost that Cleveland and New York game so we are going to start here at the top. A uh, case can be made for the top four guys for sure. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about Bryce Miller against the Cubs. Cubs have been scoring some runs, but the Brewers were rolling pretty well, and he shut them down. Uh, so it is interesting to see. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head his, <clears throat> his home numbers last year. So it'll be something that I need to dig into a little bit more. But he is sitting with a K prop of five and a half, uh, which isn't a massive K prop on the slate, but uh, it's solid enough. He is an eight minus one twenty two favorite. Game total of just eight right now. Uh, I think we can play some pitching in that matchup. Uh, I think Bryce Miller has more upside than Wicks, so I do think he's certainly viable. Peralta, <clears throat> strong upside, but he is taking on a tough Baltimore squad. The game is basically a pick em right now, but the wind is blowing out to right field in Baltimore uh, at 19 miles an hour. It's a strong number. Peralta's K-Prop is sitting at, uh, I believe it was 6.5, but let me find it again. Yeah, it is sitting at 6.5. Uh, so strong K prop, but <clears throat> to be honest, right now I might be leaning towards the fate of Peralta over Miller, but I think I'm going to end up playing both of them. Uh, we're going to have to see how things kind of break down because I am interested in both Gaussman and Yamamoto. I think people might be off of Yamamoto based on the fact that this San Diego team lit him up in Korea, but he's come back and looked great in his two starts since then. Still trending up in pitch count numbers. Um, but an extra day of rest, I could see him throwing, you know, 90 to 95 pitches here. I think it's actually a pretty good spot for him. Some of the things I've read so far today kind of have people off of him. K-Prop is just four and a half, which I found really soft. Uh, Juice is pretty heavy on the over, though. But I think he's being a little undervalued. He's a massive 198 favorite right now. Uh, so that tells me quite a bit there. So I think I'm going to end up being higher. Quite a bit higher than the field on Yamamoto. Uh, for those that are familiar with how I do my my notes and my player pools, uh, the pitchers that I do play, I do go over the our projected field weight. Uh, but Yamamoto feels like a guy I'm going to be heavily overweight on at this point. Uh, again, this is the first look. Things can change over the next few hours as I dig in more. Uh, next guy, Kevin Gossman, has not looked strong. Um, <clears throat> threw a lot of pitches in just four and a third. Against Tampa Bay, uh, I don't really remember the reason why he came out that early, other than he only made one spring start. Um, it was really rough against the Yankees here. Uh, that is a little worrisome, but he's back home. He's taking on a 
weak Colorado offense. I've seen some talk about people fading him as well because they just they don't think he's right. He's a minus two forty five favorite right now. Uh, that's pretty strong. K prop is seven and a half, which is, I believe, the highest on the slate. I'm not sure why you want to fade him. Obviously, things haven't looked sharp to begin the year. But I would assume that he's going to, you know, approach 85 pitches or so uh, in the start. So I think it's going to be a, a normal-ish start for Gaussman. Uh, and if people are going to start fading him, uh, then I want to go overweight. I haven't looked at what our projected ownership is on some of these guys just yet. Uh, I like to I like to get a look of the, the slate before I start looking at some of the projected ownerships and that sort of thing. I just happen to see some things on, on X. Uh, of people sending out their thoughts on how they're going to approach some of the pitching. Uh, so maybe Gaussman ends up super popular. I'm not sure. Kind of scrolling down, I'm going to be looking to fade Max Fried. He's looked horrendous. I know it's Miami. Miami hasn't been all that dangerous, but Fried just has not looked right. You know, so unless I dig in and his career numbers against the Marlins are elite, I, I just don't really have any interest in him. I do have some interest in Waka. Not a ton of a, I think, I mean, we might be chasing this kind of performance out of Waka all season long. White Sox pretty weak, so it's an elite performance. I'm not sure that he approaches 34 again this year, to be honest. Um, I don't know that he's going to be popular in any way, so maybe he becomes somebody that we're interested in. Um, I'm not really sure. Right now he's going to be in my pool, but I don't have a problem pulling him out. Uh, we've tried to pick on the Mets recently uh, with some pitching, and it hasn't fared very well, uh, which is kind of surprising. But, you know, looking at it, k of 5.5 is solid. Um, I wonder if he he is a road dog. Um, game total is approaching 9 now, so he might be a guy that, falls into the free category that we're looking to fade by the time we go to make our lineups. <clears throat> Excuse me. Big fan of Tanner Hawk. He's, he's looked elite to begin the season. Takes on the Angels again. Now, I do worry about both these guys in this game. Their last starts came against the opposition. Both guys are going to be in play. Both guys, I think, are going to carry a little bit of ownership because people saw what they each did against the opposition. Game total sitting at 9. Hulk is a slight favorite. Both guys sitting with a K-prop of 6.5. Hulk's juice is slightly better. Um, so I think I'm going to lead Hulk over Detmers. Uh, Detmers certainly elite, uh, but he does have the ability to get blown up a bit. Uh, I will be using both of them. I think both have much greater upside than Waka and Freed tonight. They might even have more upside than Bryce Miller uh, in this matchup. As I scroll down, I do have some interest in Andrew Abbott. He hasn't really shown the strikeout upside this year yet. Obviously, it's early. Uh, but he did come out and throw 90 pitches in start number one. So uh, there's no real limitations with him. White Sox lineup is pretty pretty weak. Uh, five and a half K prop juice heavily on the over and game wise, he's a minus 175 road favorite game total is at nine. Uh, so that's a little something to worry about. Wind is blowing straight out to center field at 22 miles an hour. That's a lot to worry about. Uh, temp is only about 52. Uh, that's better for Abbott, but I don't know right now he's going to be in my pool. But if we find out, you know, that that wind is going to be more sustained than anything, might be a spot to, to fade and hope that a couple of the White Sox guys figure it out. Uh, problem is, is, the hottest White Sox bat, I believe, is Gavin Sheets right now, and he's a left-handed hitter. Abbott being a left-handed pitcher, I'm not sure Sheets would even be in the lineup. So, something to pay attention to. Not really interested in Rodgers against Atlanta. Not going to pick on the Dodgers with a pitcher at this point. Uh, some talk for Wicks, and I think he makes a little sense. You know, the biggest thing is Seattle strikes out a lot, and we're always looking for that K upside. So probably have to have some interest in Wicks. Um, I just might 
not end up too heavy there. Really, the only couple guys down here that I'm interested in, Blackburn, because he takes on the Nationals. Uh, the only guy I'm really worried about in that lineup is C.J. Abrams. Not a big K guy, uh, so the ceiling is somewhat limited. <clears throat> but he's been really strong, shut down a, a tough Guardians lineup. Beat Detroit, but that I mean Detroit's not an elite team by any means. So, uh, <clears throat> but just not allowing him any base runners hasn't allowed a run yet. I think Blackburn's very much in play tonight. Minus one thirty five favorite. I actually thought he would have been a bit larger of a favorite even at this point. K prop just four and a half, but we're not using him for big K upside. Uh, we'd be using him because he could rack up clean innings. And that's really important on DraftKings, not so much on FanDuel. <clears throat> Brandon Fott, coming off a rough start, shut down Colorado again the year. Still racked up strikeouts against Atlanta. I'm very interested in him. K-Prop of 5.5. Uh, he is a minus 130 home favorite. Game total of 9.5, though. Uh, <clears throat> a bit worrisome there. Uh, Fott's going to make my pool initially. But I could also see a reason to remove him. Maybe replace him with a Wix because of that K upside. Don't really have any interest in guys down here. Uh, Severino maybe, but Kansas City's swinging the bat really, really well. Uh, Severino struggled the first start of the year against Milwaukee. Bounced back, wrapped up strikeouts against Cincinnati. Like So there's upside there. I'm just not sure I want to rely on Luis Severino against this Kansas City squad that's swinging it really well. He is a minus 142 favorite. And his K prop, if I could locate it, sitting at 5.5, so not terrible. Uh, so I think he is going to draw ownership at 6,800. Uh, it's just a matter of like if I think it's high enough to where I'm, I'll gladly fade it. Uh, if it ends up being super low, maybe we have to add him to the pool, get a little creative, because Kansas City should carry some stack ownership based on how they've swung it the last few days. Um, but there we have it. There's our first look at pitching. If you enjoy what I bring to you, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on to get the alert anytime we drop videos here at DFS Army. If you want to get access to our coaches, tools, sheets, Discord, etc., I'll put links in the description below. You can use promo code RAZ, that's R-A-Z, for 10% off. And as always, best of luck, everybody.